Cacao is definitely what they use for chocolate, but I wonder what do they use for coffee? Is it cocoa? cocoa? Is it not cacao? Or is cocoa cacao? Is cocoa cacao is just cacao. cocoa? Cocoa is cacao. Okay. Well, what's well coffee? Coffee bean? The coffee bean, right? Yeah. And it's like, a big green bean that they smash, and then there's little beans. No. Yeah. Or is that yeah. cacao? <laughs> I'm sure there's a picture. I'm sure. I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure we could learn about it. Yeah. I know. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, welcome back to Life Lessons in Film, and today we're going to be making sense of life through uh, Honey Boy. Yeah. It is based off Shia LaBeouf's experience of growing up as a young actor. It goes back and forth between, it, he, he plays his father in the movie, but he wrote the, the movie uh, based on his experience. So it goes back and forth between basically Shia as a 12-year-old, um, getting kid parts in movies and shows, and then it goes to, you know, present day where he's a... Uh, in rehab. In rehab. That's where he's writing the yeah. story, yeah. this movie that we're seeing. Yeah. yeah. And it was part of his court man mandated therapy. Yeah. And the therapist had him write yeah. about his dad, basically his life. And yeah. so so this is right. what it was like for him yeah. growing up as a child actor to present day, basically, to yeah. the point where he gets arrested and he's he's in this um, rehab. Yeah. And you see that he was living with his dad. His mom is somewhere. We never get to see yeah. her. The parents are separated or divorced and yeah. they're not very happy with each other. In the movie, they call, they call him Otis, yeah. right? Yeah. And so Otis doesn't have any kind of person like parent yeah. any authority figure he's the parent taking care of him it, it snaps back to his past self to kind of reinforce what he's going through during his therapy i think like the main timeline is him in the present working through therapy and then he remembers you know the things he went through as a kid it's a heavy movie what a time it's heavy <laughs> yeah it's a turbulent way to grow up in the movie the dad talks about he's like okay let me tell you about your history basically yeah. because otis asks the dad please you know, just be a dad to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, all I want is for you to be a dad. Literally all the time asking and the dad not doing that. But he does get to a point where he's just kind of like, well, I'll, I don't really have a lot, but I'll teach you what I know. Yeah. And then he's talking about their history and he's like, well, you do come from a long line of alcoholics. You come from a long line of people who were hurt and mm -hmm. dealt with their pain with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, you know, Shia LaBeouf is in that same situation yeah. and that's why he's uh, had a lot of challenges there's that one part of the movie that is yeah definitely going to form some troubling issues down the road where shia or sorry otis's character oh, the otis character is making the money basically for the two of them right the, the the father is the chaperone basically he's the one that gets otis to all the gigs and you know but he, otis is the one getting paid basically and he's the one basically kind of keeping them going. And um, and the father, I think, at one point says, you know, do you know what it's like to have your kid, you know, like be your boss? Like you have to work for your kid. Yeah. You know, you're like the employee of your of your son. Do you know what that feels like? Mm -hmm. You know? How do you think it feels for me to have my son talk to me the way that you talk to me? Have my son paying me? How do you think that feels? For a parent to feel like that much of a failure, basically, that you have to rely on your 12-year-old. Yeah. You know? And then, so not only is it demoralizing and, and gut-wrenching and hard for the, the, the father, but imagine the kid, right? You want to look out, you want to believe that your parents are able to take care of you and for them to pass on all the things they've given to you. And when you feel like there's nothing that the parent is able to do you have to do everything and you have to be the one passing on like trying to fix them versus the other way yeah. around it's a depiction of an emotionally abusive verbally abusive and sometimes physically, physically yeah. abusive father who takes out his perceived failures yeah. as a person yeah. on his kid yeah. envies his kid mm -hmm. for the fact that he managed to succeed because he was yeah. also in trying to get an entertainer yeah. there's this constant reminder of lost opportunity mm -hmm as a dad because like well you're young you still have so many yeah. i don't I, I don't have i'm not young anymore so I, there's definitely yeah. 
no hope for me. Yeah. But, you know, you got all these, you got a whole life ahead of you, honey boy, you know, those kinds yeah. of things. And he always tries to seem like a mentor, but he's, you know, he says, I'm your number one supporter. Basically, your mom left, yeah. but I'm here all the time I show up. Yeah. But he, he's not really happy about it because yeah. there's that constant reminder of him failing in mm-hmm. life. Constant um, reminder that you are not a good as you're not as good a dad as you want to be because mm-hmm. I think the movie portrays that the dad wants to be good to the kid mm-hmm. but he has his own demons in this 12 step, step program that he's a part of he mentions that you know I'm doing my best but I'm in so much pain myself you know yeah. that whole complicated situation where both of them want he wants to be a good dad Otis wants him to be a better dad to him but he just can't do it because yeah. he's can't, he hasn't gone past his own pain he hasn't accepted his life for what it is. It, it really is harder than it sounds, I think, to break the cycle. The cycle, yeah. You know, if you're given the tool, if your parents are alcoholics and they don't really know how to raise you and then what tools do they pass on? Like you really, it's hard to make your own tools and uh, or hard to know where to find other tools or better tools. But I also do like uh, when Otis says that his dad would even just kind of make up uh, his stories when he'd go to AA. They weren't his own stories. He would just take from other people's stories and then make them into his own, which I think the pain is real. I think Otis's dad did have, like, I think he was honest about coming from a long line of alcoholics and having a lot of pain that he hasn't dealt with, which means he can't be a good father to Otis. But at the same time, there is that part of him that either because he's still avoiding the pain that he needs to deal with, that's why he just makes up stories or he's just someone, maybe he's a compulsive liar or who knows, you know, like mm-hmm. a compulsive liar can still have a lot of pain, but then they still will lie and just make up a lot of stuff that actually happened to them. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you don't know how much is true about their pain, but you know that like, they're clearly in pain. She beat you over the head till she broke her hand, just keep laying it on you. Just did not give a shit. Do it again the next day. Always remember hand in a cast. Drama, just drama, you know. Mother fell out of a window, landed on a freeway. Otis at one point befriends another uh, young girl who lives kind of in their complex, yeah. housing complex. I think they both take to each other because they see that there's another wounded soul that they can just maybe find some closeness with. Yeah, we um, don't know what she does, but she yeah. seems to be like a lady of the night. Um, it's not something that's clearly depicted, but obviously yeah. both of them can, are come from traumatic um, childhoods, but they do find comfort in, in each other. At one point when he's Otis is with the potential lady of the night or just yeah. friend, they're at a pool and there's like a snake, I think, going around in the pool. Yeah. And she just kind of like says uh, to him about the snake, like, uh, you know, it's interesting that it seems like, you know, you can, what is it? Like you can you walk, can on, walk water on water until people tell you you can't, yeah. basically. That's what she says. You can walk on water till someone tells you that you don't know how to. You understand? Yeah. I think that's probably my favorite line in the movie. Yeah, um, so many. Yeah, because yeah. it's like one of those things where sometimes you have faith in yourself, right? Yeah. You have so much faith in this one thing. Maybe you're really good at it yeah. or you enjoy it a lot. Mm-hmm. And then someone tells you that, oh, you yeah. really suck at that. And, and, and then it just, especially yeah. when it's someone who, or it could either be when it's not, that's some, someone who matters right. to you. Or it can or just be like a random world. stranger. Or a stranger, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it depends on where you are in your yeah. life. If you are that, if you're not confident enough in yourself, yeah. then what people think of what you're doing does matter. Yeah. And so you just kind of see that that's who she is. Yeah. Th- these are people who have been battered yeah. and don't have that self sense of confidence yeah. enough that anybody who says anything about them mm-hmm. could just it wouldn't matter. Yeah, you know. And she's probably had that happen to her many times. And, yeah. And I think everyone grows up initially having a lot of dreams and faith in themselves and wanting to believe that they can do whatever, you know, and it is the world or parents or, yeah. you know, other factors that then chip away, chip away at yeah. their faith in themselves and being able to, you know, mm-hmm. achieve whatever. So I think whenever you meet people who are adults mm-hmm. and they are a certain way, there's so much history that you aren't really aware of. And at the end of the day, whatever it is that you are, you were raised, however you were raised is going to have an impact on who you are in the present. You know, mm-hmm. I am always sensitive to people who do live with, with addiction. So I have empathy for the father because of the fact that he is 
a, a symptom of his own mm-hmm. traumatic childhood. And so as he's parenting Otis, you understand that this guy hasn't really had the tools himself to be the dad that he that we can see that he wants to be. Mm-hmm. There's so much guilt that you can see in the way when they are relating to each other. There's so much guilt. And the thing about when you're living with addiction and now you have the responsibility of being a dad, having that child it obviously can be a beautiful thing and an, an opportunity for you to grow because it may be that one thing that you get that the universe throws at you and says, okay, this is your chance to make something of yourself and, or to become better because now you have this an entire life to take care of. Yeah. But I think the thing about it as well, is especially when you um, haven't gotten the support enough to deal with your past, once you do become a parent living with addiction, the kid becomes more a reminder of your incapacity mm-hmm. because you aren't, you can't feed them, for example. Mm-hmm. And it beats you down, the feeling that I can't, I'm not a capable parent. Mm-hmm. And then on top of the fact that now your child is in Hollywood and making money and you have to ask your kid for an allowance, mm-hmm. again, reminds you, never mind emasculating. I think this would be the same thing for any parent, like mm-hmm. a mom, you know, because... And so the, the things that you see, the emotional abuse and the neglect and physical abuse as, as well, it's this frustration manifesting, mm-hmm. right? The frustration of not being able to support his kid in the way that he wants and then a constant reminder. One thing that was also interesting was when he's in therapy and he said, and the therapist talks about, you have PTSD. And he's like, what, PTSD? I thought that was only for people mm-hmm. in the army. Mm-hmm. And that was also, that was really, really interesting because it's just, I think people... Um, a lot of times when you grow up in a, an abusive home or come from a traumatic experience that isn't commonly perceived mm-hmm. as such, yeah. you don't really understand what you've been through. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, there's also the fact that you grew into this. And so yeah. this was normal for you. And yeah. so you don't actually have any other yardstick to measure your life against. Mm-hmm. And so you think that this is normal, right? And so the idea of PTSD is such a foreign thing. You think you should be been at war, yeah. seeing people getting amputated and all of these things. Yeah. Even without physical abuse, there's a lot of that, you know, people who may have come from things like neglectful homes. Mm-hmm. Things like, even if the dad, you know, we see that the dad does physically uh, mm-hmm. abuse him, but it's not consistent. The consistency is the emotional aspect yeah. of their relation, uh, relation the emotional yeah. abuse yeah. and really the parentification because that on its own can be a, a traumatic experience mm-hmm. enough that it could induce PTSD, like mm-hmm. the self-parenting. Mm-hmm. And it becomes complicated because it's like, well, you weren't really beaten. All your parents did was to force a whole lot of responsibility on you or they neglected you, They you yeah. were alone. Yeah. Him always seeing his parents arguing on the phone yeah. and then having to lie about his dad. You know, oh, he was at work today. Yeah. Was he? No, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah. You know, having to cover for your dad. Knowing that your dad lies and seeing yeah. how it, the things play out, the yeah. manipulation, those mm-hmm. kinds of things. Yeah. And yes, the being the in-between between... Yeah. The dad and like that conversation yeah. when the dad the mom calls mm-hmm. um, yeah, he's, yeah. and the mom is complaining. He's just repeating yeah. what the mom is saying. And then so, yeah. yeah, and then the dad you know fights back and yeah. then same thing, right? Yeah. He repeats what the dad is saying to the mom on the phone. Yeah. That kind of stuff. You know, yeah. those things, even without the physical abuse, mm-hmm. that is that is abuse. Yeah. That is neglect. And yeah. that is something that will arrest a child's development and have a ripple effect throughout their lives Mm -hmm. the world doesn't ever doesn't really recognize things like neglect or Mm -hmm. parentification of children as something that is worthy of being as taken as seriously Mm -hmm. as ptsd caused from things like war ptsd uh coming from a war zone wasn't even accepted for the longest time so uh now we take that as almost like uh truism like if you are in a war zone you're going to get some of ptsd it's just mm-hmm. it's just something that's so traumatic for someone to go through but back in the day it, it wasn't taken seriously so now it's like you know maybe we years from now it'll be the same kind of thing with like neglect or some you know issues with family is it'll be like, well of course you went through neglect and of course you'll have ptsd yeah. you know so maybe we're getting there but the whole time he's asking the dad for affection right. in different ways be a better dad why don't you hold my hand I don't want to be a sissy, you know? Um, And then that moment when the dad has his arms wrapped around him, you can see that he's just kind of like, this is what I want. Yeah. Yeah. I'm finally relaxed. Yeah. This feels right. This is what I, 
Yeah. And that was really sad, you know? Yeah. It doesn't seem like there's finality. Mm -hmm. The movie, I don't think, is really trying to depict any kind of like a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. It's just depicting a reality. People who do go through those kinds of things, when you meet them, it's really kind of unfair or unjust to expect that they would be clean mm -hmm. at one point of yeah. their past and that they could just now move through the world mm -hmm. as though they never went through that because obviously you're thinking they should work through it. Yes, mm -hmm. they should work through it. Once you're an adult, you can be looking at your mom or your dad to mm -hmm. help you out and to fix the mistakes, fix the, the mistakes of the past, yeah. even though they caused them. Yeah. Because even if your dad says, I'm sorry, you know, you know that your dad loves you, even though he's living with addiction and is treating you unkindly. You know that you that he loves you. You know that he doesn't, he isn't capable. And even if he does apologize, the pain is still there. You still yeah. went through those experiences. Uh, it only really kind of helps you maybe mend your relationship with your parent. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily heal your pain all that much. It helps a little. Yeah. But you still have to. To deal with get it. Through it. The, you know, work yeah. on that. Yeah. Like, yeah. But that's, <laughs> that's what we got from Honey Boy. What would you guys think? Have you seen it? Yeah. yeah. Did we miss anything? Do you agree or disagree with what we had to say? Let yeah. us know. Yeah, please yeah. comment down below. Yeah. And share your thoughts mm -hmm. on our thoughts. Until next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.